tax bill. As I understand, there are some uh, high school students here to testify. And Representative Messier is going to take over for a little bit. Okay. Um, can we have Mary Murphy Walsh? Is she here? Hmm. Jack Cadman? Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, you may begin, Mary. Hi, everyone. Mary Murphy Walsh. I'm president of the Young Democrats of Rhode Island. Um, I'm going to uh, give most of the time here to um, high school students who have come to testify on their own behalf about why this bill um, would make a meaningful difference in, in recognizing and um, giving credibility to their voice that uh, they've been using anyway, uh, given the current circumstances happening in high schools right now. I just wanted to list off um, before they start other things that we entrust 16 and 17 year olds to do um, here in, in our country and in this state. Obtain their driver's license and drive a vehicle, uh, legally work and pay income uh, tax on their income. Um, they are of the uh, age of medical consent. They can open a bank account, they can give blood to save a life, uh, and they can file for emancipation um, if their circumstances call for it. Um, so I, I just ask you to listen to their, their testimony in the context of these other uh, rights we've already given to them. Thank you. Any questions from the committee? All right, uh, we'll go to Jack. Go ahead. Good evening. Thank you for uh, having me here. Um, I'd like to testify in uh, support of this bill today. I think it's, uh, I think it's a good bill. Um, I believe it's an enabling statute, not a, not a mandate on the town. So it's really up to the towns to decide whether or not they would like to um, put this into effect on their school committee. Um, it's not the state forcing them to, it's just giving them the option. I think, you know, that this town should have the option to do that, especially if you're from a town like mine where the school committee doesn't have any binding powers outside of school policy. Um, the town council makes all financial decisions and makes any binding decision on, on town law, anything like that. The school committee only makes decisions on school policy, um, hiring and firing, administration, things of that nature. I think uh, people who are directly affected by it should have the ability to voice their opinion through voting. Um, I mean, People are allowed to vote on the school committee if they have no students in the school at all. So if, if they can vote, and I'm not saying they shouldn't, I'm just saying if they can vote, people who are directly affected by it should be able to as well. That's about all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions from the committee? No, thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No. <laughs> No, I want, first of all, thank you for coming in, the other students for coming in. I appreciate your engagement and all this. I, but I just want to point out, I think you made a good argument actually against the bill. You're from, you're from Providence, I'm assuming? South Kingstown. South Kingstown, okay. So, for example, in my town, North, North Smithfield, 80% yeah. of our town budget is administered by the school committee. So it's a little bit different. You know what I'm saying? I understand what you're saying about policy and things. Like that. I was, by the way, for what's worth, my son turned 18 while he was a senior in high school, and I, I said to him he should run for school committee. It would be kind of funny, actually. Yeah. But, you know, he didn't do it. But I, I understand your impetus, and I appreciate it. If but, I, but the argument cuts both ways. You just may just want to point that out. Yeah, but if I could say, that's why I think it's a good thing that this is just enabling the towns to do that. It's not forcing them to. If a town like North Smithfield, you know, where their school committee has direct control over their budget, it, if they wouldn't want to let students vote on something that powerful, it, you know, it's up to the town. And for a town like mine, it, where they don't have any control, I, the state shouldn't be able to tell them no. Just well, the state has to set voting age at some point. So the state True. should be able to tell them no. The question is where, that's all. That's yeah, the that's what I mean. I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, we're going to hear from Henry Serrano. And can we have Sophia Natalillo? Uh, 
I want to thank you, Mr. Chairman, and all the members of the committee for hearing my testimony. Uh, I have some prepared remarks, but I'll keep them as brief as possible because I know it hasn't been a very short night. Um, in August, I will be 18 years old. I will have the right to vote in November, in my school committee election, and in all elections. Um, I'm not here testifying on this bill if it were to become law because it would help me. It wouldn't. I'll have that right. But I am here testifying because if this bill had been implemented two years ago, this would have greatly benefited me and many of my peers. Last year, my school committee attempted to come after LGBTQ students. And as a student representative to the school committee, I saw firsthand what was happening, and I couldn't sit idly by. And many of the students in my school also could not sit idly by. After nearly 100 students, teachers, and parents vocally opposed the proposed policy, it did fail, and that is very good. But it cannot be denied that if this bill were law, that never would have happened. You're all elected officials, so I have to ask you, when was the last time you introduced a bill designed to disenfranchise or diminish a sizable block of voters in your district? I'm willing to venture, never. Um, so when we look at what this bill would do, it would add real repercussions to when schools want to politicize um, school districts, when they want to come after LGBTQ plus students, when they want to slash fundings for certain departments such as drama, music, or the arts, when they want to ban books or do anything else that would greatly destroy or diminish their school district. Um, one of the points that I heard raised um, in a different discussion about a bill is that we don't want people voting who aren't active, who aren't engaged, who don't know what they're voting on. And I think that this bill would do the direct opposite of that because obviously parents and community members hear what's going on in schools, but it's the students who are directly impacted by what school committees do. So if these are the people who are most active, most engaged, and most understanding of what the school committee does, why shouldn't we give them a voice? So I implore you to turn students into shareholders and support this legislation. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions from the committee? No? Okay, Sophia. Good evening, and thank you for, like Henry said, staying late to hear our testimony today. My name is Sophia Nardalillo, and I'm a current junior at Smithfield High School. Today, I'm here to speak in support of Bill 8046 because I have seen firsthand how eager my peers are to participate in the function of their school system. Last spring, like Henry mentioned, a bill was introduced in the Smithfield S School Council that was about transgender policy. Now, irregardless of anyone's opinion on that bill, there was one thing that was made abundantly clear, and that was that there was interest in it among students. This bill was a topic of conversation at my lunch tables, at practices, and even outside of school. There were students, like Henry mentioned, that were going to speak at school board meetings, they were posting on social media, and most importantly, they were having civic conversations with each other. Allowing students 16 and older to vote in their school board elections, or at least giving towns the option to allow them to do that, would get more students to register to vote at a younger age, and would also give them practicing in voting in local elections before voting in state and federal elections. What is even more important than the civic engagement, however, is the right of students to be able to vote on issues that directly impact them. The fact of the matter is that myself and other students can shout from the rooftops about the changes we do and do not want to see in our school. The things that we need and do not need, but no one has to listen to us. In America, the right to vote is what gives people power. And giving Rhode Island students 16 and older that power would allow us to demand the change that would help us and adamantly reject the ones that would hurt us. The way I see it, you're only in high school once, and I believe that students should be able to do whatever they can to help shape this experience to be the best and most beneficial that it can be for them. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions from the committee? No? Thank you. Now there's another, Sophia. Okay, I can't read your last name. And uh, Mia Milosevic, are you speaking? I guess not, okay. Go ahead. Hello, I'm Sophie Mutasib. I'm also a junior at Smithfield High School. I'm currently 17 and I'm in front of all of you today as I wanna speak in support of this bill. Our educational systems exist to teach students how to, how to be and aid them in becoming active members of society. Each student will grow to impact their community in different ways but as American, we all share the civic duty of voting. 
Um, <laughs> The decisions which the school board makes impact every aspect of school and the students, as, and the board members serve their communities by making what they feel as improvements to the schools. Students should be able to vote for the members of their committees, of their school board committees, once they're above the age of 16, in order to ensure that the people who the students feel will make the most positive impact on the schools are in charge. No one has a better grasp on the changes which need to be made and what works and what doesn't in schools than the students themselves. Students voicing their opinions will also, or in these elections, will also help familiarize them with the voting process and boost like teen voting in vocal elections as that's been a very big issue even at the other bills that have been raised today of getting more people into the polls and if teens are allowed to vote for their school committees it'll inspire them that their voice does matter and that even if they can help something change and see the change that they want in their schools they can for their towns as well and i'm also a member of my school or not my schools of my town's youth council and with the youth council we work very closely with adults and we go to like a lot of different We've had a lot of different presentations for adults. Even within my school, we're having a presentation about AI for the teachers um, in May. And I think that this proves that already a lot of students are very active in their communities and they already have a voice and they are trying to educate their teachers and to voice their opinions on what they see that needs to be changed, but they just don't have the power to do anything. And if they could vote in their school board committees, they could be closer to getting the changes done that they need to see. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions from the committee? Right here. Yeah, I'm curious, why just school committee elections? Why not town councils? I think that, I think both would be helpful, but my focus right now is just on school committees, which I am just like a student, which that affects my life way more, like my present in school. And I'm 17, I turn 18 in September, so I'm pretty close to being able to vote in like, town elections and full general elections. I do think both are important, but in my personal opinion, just the age of 16, 17, I think it's a nice introductory to voting of just being able to do school board committees, but I'm not opposed to town committee meetings or like, voting, that's just not what I'm here for today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions? No. 